Um, everybody's good. Apologies. Best, worst. Yeah. What did I say I was gonna put it for? Hold on. Oh, fuck. A wizard's thing. Oh yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yes, that, yeah, was that it. works. You need to walk, take a lap. You need to. All right, come on. All right, here we go. He chugged an espresso. Yeah. All right, and welcome to Fast Break Breakfast NBA Podcast. My name is Keith here once again with my buddies through the miracle of computer phone here with Chuck Anderson. Hey now. And with John Burr. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. This is the start of the end of the offseason. The offseason was a solid two weeks, I think. 15 um, minutes long. This is the big Eastern Conference Butter or Parquet preview episode, which begins the fateful march towards opening night. Mm. Just saying, we've locked into the shows. We have them on the schedule, and before you know it, um, honestly, I'm not sure how we're going to do it when the actual <laughs> season starts. It's going to be, <laughs> be kind of busy. We've gotten a little busier in our lives. Uh, Chuck with his job. John juggling a baby and the pandemic maybe ending. And Ooh. I started like, I'm now taking my, I'm an now carpool dad guy. Like I'm now spending my mornings and afternoons. Like I wonder if I leave five minutes earlier, if I'll get out of there 10 minutes earlier, or if I wait to the last second. So are you like taking other children to school? Is that no, so I say carpool, but no, 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 no. We don't let anyone in our car. No, it's a okay. hermetically just- sealed pod. Um, bringing your kids to school pool. Yeah, I'm just the, I'm just the car rider, the, the driver, the guy dropping off. Uh, Would they take Ubers before? Like how they get there? No, can they didn't use, go. It can used to be a lane? very casual going lane? to the daycare. Like I felt like go drop it off at pre-K. There's no line. Like we go to right. the daycare, we park. I walk them inside. I like sign them into the teacher. I'm like, see you guys. Now that like we did the first year of kindergarten virtually, now it's first grade. He's going in person. I'm actually like waiting in this long queue of, you know, 80 cars uh, to pick up. They have a very involved system. Uh, you have to show them your number. Is there a placard? It's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I th- honestly, they're doing the best they can. That's kind of how I, <laughs> well, I... I think like to put your child on a bus is like to murder a bus driver right now. So <laughs> Right, yeah. I do that. Yeah, so like the bus, we could, we could do the bus, but I mean, what, what do I got to do? I got a podcast. That's about it. I got to go play the piano sometimes. And even that, I basically call out of for, you no know, 12 months now. But uh, it is, it's kind of fun. I'm learning like all the little houses. I'm trying to figure out which one has a Wi-Fi, like on the houses beside the carpool line where we're stopped because there's like rows of houses all around. We're just stuck there. I got the, I got the four-year-old in the car who's screaming the whole time. Uh, listen to Pocahontas. You guys listen to the Pocahontas soundtrack recently? Dead silence? Nothing? Man. Zoom crashed. What happened? Zoom crashed. Oh, okay. I thought it was me. No, it was definitely Zoom. Cool. So you were... I have my saying, entire. You were saying, what do I got to do? I got a podcast. That's what you were saying. Yeah. yeah uh, the last thing I heard was, I got a podcast. Oh, okay. So I went on and said, um, "You sound weird now." You hear me? All right. I think we're hearing you through your. Yeah, you do sound weird. Yep. The microphone changed for you guys. Okay. I mean, check check, check me. No. There you are. Yeah. Snowball. I'll right. put. Good. Right. All right, we're good. Crash next thing. Everything good? Yep. yep. So <laughs> I uh I have just asked you guys if you're familiar with the Pocahontas soundtrack. <laughs> I think Mel Gibson sings on it. That's all I got. Vanessa uh, that, that'd Vanessa be, Williams. That'd be great. So um let me try to match the energy so you guys will match my energy from where we picked okay. up where you guys <laughs> weren't hearing me and I was just going on and on and on. <laughs> Are you guys are you guys familiar with the Pocahontas soundtrack? I know that noted anti Semite Mel Gibson sings on it. Yes, yeah. Mel, Mel Gibson is on there. And Playboy Playmate uh, Vanessa Williams, former Miss America. You the, go and save the best for the, the Pocahontas soundtrack is really good. 
It slaps. And I didn't know this as a, I want to say, 17-year-old? 16? I'm not sure when it came out. I thought it was pretty terrible, uh, Mm -hmm. the movie. I've now been, again, because of Spotify, everything's on demand. It's one, it's amazing, although it does have some, like, it has some catchy lyrics that are kind of bad. They get stuck in your head. Well, you have like a five, like a five and a three year old, right? Or seven uh, and a five year old. There's six and four now. Yeah. But, so like that yeah. stuff is positively Wagnerian compared to like baby shark. Doo-doo, no, it really is. No, no. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. I'm like these, like these, whatever these Alan Minkin scores, like they're yeah. good. Like, like they're musically good. But like there's the one where it's like the white men are singing about the Native Americans. And it's like, I'm just walking around all day going, savages, savages, they're barely <laughs> even human. Sav-. And I'm like, I can't. Maybe we should take down another rotation. Problematic. Uh, it's a little it's a little problematic. Anyway, uh, we got a big show, so I guess we might as well yeah. go ahead and get to breakfast. Uh, we are at least all in Nashville, Tennessee. John, welcome back uh, to the Central Time Zone. Um, have you had breakfast? Today, I, I so I'm, I'm doing like... Um, I'm trying like a serious Chuck Kinseyan lifestyle change where Allie and I are going to try to eat like uh, salads and fruits a lot. So we had fruit. Sa- I had I started it today, even though I wasn't around her had fruit salad for breakfast. Hey, now what goes in a fruit salad? We just cut up pieces of fruit. This was That'd banana, mango, lovely pineapple and strawberry. That's awesome. I love those. Yeah. And I didn't can, even like pour like syrup all over it or anything. So I guess can a man a survive on just those just those things? I feel like I'm not. I feel like I'm going to die right now. Like I had a salad for lunch and then I'm not supposed to eat anything for a really long time. Mm. And like I had to go to the grocery store today and just buy more. Well, actually, the farmer's market type grocery store, even worse, and just buy more fruits and vegetables. And if there had been anything unhealthy for me to buy. Yeah, I would have cracked and bought it and eaten it in the car on the way home. Mm, that's but there man. wasn't anything unhealthy for me to buy. Well, it was that, like a perfect storm. It was like food prison. Best of luck with this latest uh, diet slash we'll see. thing. I think we're on. What is this one? Number 122 of the show's run. Yeah, I mean. You guys I, like to like try mine, mine with, are usually with your, like, with your foods. Mine are usually like facades only right like i know what i'm actually going to do yeah but i have like a facade to uphold chuck actually tries to do them usually or does them has for, done for a short amount of time yeah well i like that you guys do it because you actually introduced me to like i don't think i'd heard the word acai before you guys yeah i, I had like, that like yesterday that, that was that was years and years ago where i was like i think Super i've seen food. that i think i've seen that written somewhere when i was traveling on the west coast but i didn't know how to say it but right. uh, you, you guys introduced it to me. Chuck, what was your what was your breakfast? Uh, today sucked, but I'll talk to you about yesterday's breakfast. That's how I like it. Um, I had some cinnamon rolls, boys. Ooh. And then I went to dinner at Nashville uh, Staple City House with some homies before the Nas concert. Saw Nas with the Nashville Symphony. Nasir Jones. As one does. Bridge. Shout out, Nas. Um, and I, I ate. With power listener Rod Yuri, shout out Titans DJ Rod Yuri, uh, the homie, and he watched me eat an egg, Rod the bod, egg with scrapple, oh yeah, and kimchi, oh Ooh, yeah, with a fried egg, easy over easy, um, gave up. So tell the listeners what scrapple is. Scrapple's like pig stuff. It's like uh, pig it's scraps. Intestine. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it it's really good. It was fried into this like block. And then uh, draped over some cold kimchi, placed over some cold kimchi, and then the fried egg was draped over it. And uh, yeah, it was fire. It was like fire. The euros have but, like a fancy version of scrapple. I think it's called like ASIC or a seek or something, where it's like a gelatin. Omar Asik, he led the NBA in rebounds. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I it's like you. a gelatin with the pig guts in there, and you, and it's kind of like served cold instead of like uh, Americans. We take do something like that. We fry it on a pan. Yeah, right. Damn it. But, well, uh, they, yeah, they also sent out a uh, a biscuit with head cheese on it. There you go. So if you ever had head cheese, it's not actually cheese. No, but it is actually head. Yes. So um, but yeah, it was a fire biscuit. And yeah, when I go to a very nice restaurant, I'm not an idiot. I'm going to eat meat. 
especially oh. a James Beard award winning restaurant. See, we're not even we don't even call you out on, on your faux veganism anymore. It's it's real flaky, but it's I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I've definitely flaky like a biscuit, like a nice biscuit with head cheese. Yeah, um, I, I have eaten significantly less animals in the past year, and I'm proud of that. Yeah, I'm and working it, on it. it. And that's the that's the thing. It's it's progress, not perfection. Trust the progress. I probably shouldn't have <laughs> like two ventricles in my body dedicated to different types of meat anymore. Yeah. Like I feel like that's probably <laughs> overload. Just them processing the engine of my body, just processing meat seems like bad use. Your yeah. second Therefore, stomach. Yeah. <laughs> that that meal sounded amazing, Chuck. I also Monday sad breakfast. I had the cups of coffee, the numerous cups, if you will, and uh, a bowl of smart start cereal. Not that, that I was sounds... attempting to. I mean, it sounds like, oh, I had smart start and coffee. That's I'm not trying to be healthy. It's just like the rule. Just, just, just the there. cereal we had. It's a it's a cereal that's like really sugary. They call oh. it smart start, but there's a lot of it has a better ring to it. Than it's Donald way start. too sweet uh, to be, I think, probably good for you. To smart be actual... start and coffee sounds like a way to like unclog your constipation. You like know, that might explain up. some things that happened uh, throughout throughout my that day. Car, that carpool was dangerous. Uh, <laughs> anyway, those were our breakfasts. After our breakfasts, we move to our breakfast in bed apologies. This is our chance to make right what we might have gotten wrong or incorrect on a previous episode. It's frequently the first time we talk about the NBA, does anyone have anything they need to apologize for? Yes, Chuck. Oh, uh, last week I filled in for Johnny Boy on our Thursday show. Yeah, and I managed to uh, have a you know game of of scones by myself. Yeah, where I was tested on my knowledge of the Washington franchise post bullets. Yeah, in in their Wizards era. Yeah. And it turns out I only knew two good wizards, and that's <laughs> yeah, I, it wasn't. I, I was, I it was, it wasn't. That's bad. on me. That, so two. that's that's on me. That's on me, Chuck. I thought maybe incorrectly. I thought you could name maybe the broad strokes, the the four or five most famous wizards of the last twenty five years. Anton Jameson came into our lives. Scored a lot of points and then did the men in black trick. And, we, and, for, so, and we've all forgotten him forever. Peek behind the curtain before Chuck and I started. I told him, he told I'm going to ask you about the Washington Wizards. Just think of some <laughs> Washington Wizards names. So I again, I thought maybe that would have been enough to come up with like a, a Gilbert Arenas. Like, a, well, what I did, <laughs> I cheated. And I still got like two. Yeah, Keith I think you edited Google something and, and, and you said, edited you said a two weird out. name and I took it out. If you want to see the, the unedited, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, um, when I said I'm not allowing that guest in. He, he, he won't. So next time I'm just going to script it. That's me. Next time yeah, I'm just going to script it and say, I want you to have the main names. So then the punchline, when we get uh -huh. around to Brendan Haywood being fifth in win shares for the Wizards right. the past 25 years, it's the Brendan Haywood. Well, he played a long time. In that's it. It's too. all about it's up, all yeah. about the years, the cumulative. Live when you're looking at win stats. shares lists, they can yeah. be really they can be funny. It, it rewards <laughs> the amount of time played, the amount of wins you contributed to. So I, you know, Chuck, thank you for apologizing, but also I, I do feel that's also somewhat my fault. Um, I have an apology. I got a couple apologies. Also, on that Thursday show, I told a pretty involved story about going to a funeral. I got some of my states mixed up and I, and I made some big geographical errors that were very obvious. I said the basketball hall of fame was in Springfield, Connecticut, which is clearly false. It's in Ma Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, the funeral I went to was in Massachusetts and it was in Connecticut. And then I drove to Massachusetts for the basketball hall of fame. This is one where when I was putting the show together, I heard the error. I knew immediately that I was like, Oh, when I was talking to Damien, I got that wrong, but I know it's now in the wrong spot. But like, I didn't have a good way to edit out the wrong states because I said it like three times. Uh, like a lot of times on these shows, I will go back in and uh, I, like. I thought you were gonna say that you heard the error and you were like, "I'm not gonna correct that. I'm gonna use it as my apology next week." Because oh no, that, actually, that happens actually, to me no. sometimes. No, no, I'll be no, like, no, no, no. I'll be like, "Oh, no. thank God, I have something." To Most of the time, for. if I hear us say something wrong or factually incorrect, I'll, I'll cut it out. Every now and then I'll go back to the microphone and like overdub or like re-record the, the correct information. In this situation, I was like, yeah, I said the state like three times. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't know. 
doesn't doesn't affect the story at all. But I got that factually wrong. I would also, in addition to that apology, I would like to apologize to Chuck again for doubting his custom made fast break breakfast orange silk caftan. Yeah, <laughs> I was like this this desperate cry for attention. I don't know if we need it at this Grizzlies caravan. Mm. Oh, we needed it. Oh, we, we needed, needed it. every inch of that spectacle, and it was awesome. In the, the industry, conversation. In the industry, Keith, we call that bringing the ruckus. He brought the ruckus. <laughs> Chuck See, Keith, brought the ruckus at the sounds game. I, I was wrong. It's exactly what we needed. Well Keith, played. you're you're a craftsman, but I'm a showman. And that's and why a shaman. we and, and, a shaman. A, and a shaman. And, um, <laughs> and it's and I think it's important for both of our uh, both of our talents to be displayed. And when we're in public, I put on the show. That's I got to say my my huge takeaway from mm. this Grizzlies caravan thing uh, last Friday was we got to get back in public more because yeah, Chuck, the, like the, the, the switch was flipped. Like he was on, he was just, he was just loud and big. Loved. Yeah. That's why I'm here, baby. Yeah. Not for my wind shear knowledge. That's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well. <laughs> Ch- uh, John, you have anything you need to uh, atone for? It is as, the year dictates um, our butter or parquet show. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to go ahead and apologize for, as I do every year, not really understanding butter or parquet, but dang it, I'm going to really. And as I prepared, I didn't look at win totals. You're so, you, you're so this is so the wires are, are crossed I know. in your brain. So, so over unders have nothing to do with it. I has nothing to it. do. I'm going to explain this now and right. then I'm going to explain it again. And then when we get to get them, the second one. all we're asking for in butter or parquet previews is did this team improve in the offseason? Did they get better? It's it has nothing question. to do. It has nothing yeah. to do with how many games are they going to win? What seed are they going to be? We're just saying the team they finished the year with, did they get butter? That's all we're doing. We're going to come back to it. But I thank all you right. for going ahead and apologizing for an incredible run of you messing Seven this years up. strong. Like, yeah, multiple for, years. for multiple years in a row. <laughs> anyway, uh, those were our apologies before we get to our steak and eggs best thing, I got to tell you, if you want to guarantee your seats to see John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Zaire Williams for the 21-22 season, you got to get your next get, next gen Grizz season tickets right now. Place a 20% deposit today and secure the best seats at the lowest prices. See the Grizz host, the Lakers, the Clippers, the Nets, the Heat, and more. You get that with the 21-22 season tickets. Plus, when you become an MVP member, you receive all the benefits, including special events, merchandise, discounts, and more. Call 901-888-HOOP or click grizzlies.com today. All right, steak and eggs, gentlemen. What's the best thing you saw in the last week? Chuck, what's your steak and eggs? Uh... My best thing this week has to do with uh, the Chris Bosh Hall of Fame speech. And usually, you know, Hall of Fame speeches are just kind of like rote and um, not really like inspirational. Or or it's Michael Jordan uh, systematically taking down anyone who has ever wronged him during the course of his life. And career. Right. That That is also a possibility, too. But this Chris Bosh uh, speech... <clears throat> you know, showed his vulnerability. He mentioned uh, how he used to cry at uh, after losing as a kid. He cried after the 2011 finals on public television. He cried when he found out he couldn't play basketball anymore at his, you know, the top of his game, 31 years old. And to show that sort of vulnerability on a stage like that was super, super inspiring and kind of gave me this like... And there's no jokes here. The realness of it. Oh, don't know? worry. I have I have jokes for you. So oh, okay, you, good. So you're so you're moved and surprised by a Hall of Fame speech that included tears. No, boy, do I have to... a lot of Hall of Fame speeches. No, where he talked about crying. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, not like the actual tears. <laughs> like that's a thing. But he <laughs> talked about being emotional to this to the point of being of, of crying, and I think that's like a. 
you know, in a, in a world of highly masculine, you know, uh, world to, to admit to being vulnerable is very courageous. And I thought it was, uh, inspirational from, from like an emotional intelligence standpoint, not, you know, it was, it was a story. He, he put together a story of his life. He handed Pat Riley a ring back that he took in, in the summer before he signed with Miami. It was, you know, had funny moments, but the actual beauty of him keeping it 100, like, and, and showing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of his his heart was was great to me. I thought it was beautiful. So it was my best thing. I have I have a question about um this the sports world of, of machismo and mass toxic masculinity. Right. Um I know Brian you don't Macho. like the, I know you don't like the NFL Chuck. But in in a league, the NFL that is so about like violence and machismo in being manly and aggressive, why do they still punt from their opponents like 33 yard line? On like a fourth and four. Wouldn't I mean I don't I don't want to get toxic myself, but wouldn't a real man go for it? Yes. I mean, wouldn't it's group thing, Bum man. Phillips would go for it. I don't, yeah. It's group hey, thing. here See, here's another what? my manliest coaches of my youth, like like my favorite most masculine coaches, guys like Johnny Majors, and they would do like if it was like third and nine, they'd try to get him with a quick kick, the pooch punt. Oh right, right, and that's so I think maybe the way maybe men fought. maybe it's, it's, punting maybe punting. Is I assume manly, it's Keith. somehow tied to like trench warfare. It's like Jeff World Fisher War loved punting. Jeff Fisher. Jeff loved Fisher to punt. taught me you always take the extra point. You always <laughs> take the like always take the points, and I thought that was like that's Smash Mouth football. Yeah, like oh, are we at the one yard line, fourth down? Let's get three points. Let's take the points. See, that's what's talking about exotic Smash Mouth football, football, yeah. football, where you just you you put a little little sensitivity in there also like if you don't talk like the way chuck and chris bosh are talking your hopes of ever getting laid again are gone so you better start talking that way can, yeah can i make open an admission your heart and you can open up your pants look into your heart i'd like to make an admission about the basketball hall of fame mm -hmm. yeah i didn't see chris bosh's speech i've also never seen michael jordan's hall of fame speech what i've also never seen kevin durant's hall of fame speech I'm not MVP sure I've speech. ever seen, despite having attended the Basketball Hall of Fame, which I hear is probably in Massachusetts. I've never, <laughs> I've, I don't think I've ever heard any of the speeches. This falls, it somehow falls in the one week of the year where I'm like, you know what? I'm not turning on NBA TV. Like, if I were in control of this broadcast, which I guess technically I am, I would end this meeting and you would have to go watch the Michael Jordan speech and then come back to us and, and we get your remarks because it is a uh, unbelievably uh, septic speech. <laughs> it is one of the most vile things you can I ever think, watch. I, I think it is the, the, the opposite side of the coin to Chris Bosch's speech. While it's Bosch's speech showed his, his ability to connect with himself. Jordan's speech showed the, mind of a sociopath that so that's what i've heard i mean i've heard all the reviews like this you know is essentially like, like i've never seen lost but i've heard all the reviews like yeah. I, i've heard all the reviews like it's been spoiled i've never you know, heard like, it called septic before i'm not sure if that's where we were going for but there's like, so oh it is because it, okay. it is toxic just, baby just toxic <laughs> it, um it is like you know how in the movies there's always the guy who gets up there and he's about to give one speech and yeah. then he tears up the speech and it comes straight from his heart. Yeah. This for the first time ever feels like that. <laughs> this is truly like Denzel Washington, the end of flight, just being like, yeah, I was drunk. I'm drunk. I'm high now. Like, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> it's like an amazing, like, and for me, honestly, this sounds insane. And I guess this is how septic I've become a toxic. I am. It turned the page from it flipped the script for me on Jordan. Cause it was like, this man is the villain. This villain that I hated my entire childhood, like this is the type of villain that I can relish now. And between that and the Michael Jordan, like hagiography, the like seven part thing yeah, where yeah. it's just Michael laughing into an iPad at other people's heartfelt memories. I mean, it was just like, wow, this is the pure evil. This is, this is the bad guy. This is the Tony Montana of the NBA. And I, and I wish I could go back and just revel in it because it is <laughs> insane. Well, maybe uh, maybe I'll, I'll set up a viewing party. Where <laughs> you should, man. I watch it and respond, make notes. 
try to add that to my game, my personal I mean, ethos. I feel like I'm pretty petty, but this is like <laughs> Richard King of NASCAR petty. Well, I'll do my best thing. My steak and eggs is, and and hopefully this this might cheer you up, John. I don't know if you've even heard the news just this this afternoon. No, then no. The NBA has announced that they're tr- that they finally oh, they're going to start turning stuff. the dial back yes. about reviewing everything. They are going to no longer automatically review out of bounds calls. I would say questionable out of bounds calls, but it's essentially all out of bounds calls are reviewed. And this, sh- this should shave 42 minutes off of every game. And so they're now only going to review an out of bounds call if a coach challenges it. Now, there is going to be negative consequences to this. There will be games decided by missed calls, there will be calls that harm your favorite team, my favorite team. Like, they're, it's going to affect the game somewhat. Right, but so the, the bright side is even with replay, games are still decided by missed exactly. calls. Exactly. <laughs> it's no longer be, it's no longer going to be. Oh, we see the ball went out of bounds, but it's clearly a foul. But the rules don't allow us to change it to a foul. We have to give it to the wrong team, or it's like no longer the one thing in the last two well, minutes. Did they did they fix that? No, let's. They didn't. Yeah. That's always okay. been a problem where mm, you can't yeah. add a foul on replay. Uh, only it's very unique circumstances. Like you can change a block to a charge or vice versa, but this way the games are going to flow so much better. And we realize replay cannot correct every call. And this desire to get so many of these calls, right. Has really made the end of games terrible. And I think this is a positive step. I think this combined with hopefully the way the new shooting foul rules are going to be called where, you can no longer have an awkward, like abnormal shooting motion attempting to draw contact. Like if you lean forward or you lean sideways, you jump sideways. If you jump backwards into your guy, that no longer is going to be a foul on the defense. I'm hopeful this combined with the fewer just excessive reviews is going to make a much more pleasant viewing experience. It's going to make the NBA better. Right. I think that the NBA had kind of drifted perilously close to being hostile to casuals. Yeah, and I think this is one of the necessary steps taken to rectify that perception. I think. I mean, there there are also going to be unintended consequences. So I don't know what that's yeah. going to be. Um, I feel yeah, like, I, yeah. but but we're we're going back just to more how basketball used to be. Like, are they eventually? Is there going to be clamoring for? Well, now we need more coaches challenges, which I don't really want. I could accept like if you get one right now, you get to keep it with this new change. That I think this will have such a dramatic positive effect that it'll be kind of similar to like the NFL changing the way quarterbacks were handled, which for a while you had an, Oh, like a a very negative response is like, Oh, they're just taking all the manliness out of the game. These guys are playing, can't touch the quarterbacks anymore. But I think now that you have guys like Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen completely changing the game into this like explosive you know, 60 yards in the air type game that I don't think you're hearing any complaints any longer. Well, also the NFL players finally learned, and I'm sorry we're talking about football, Chuck. uh, They they finally learned, like, don't jump on the guy on the ground. Like, now it's very common. You know, for a while there, it was like, oh, it's a 15-yard penalty. This stinks. But, like, I think the the, the NBA change, we're just going to get, I I hope the game is going to get even smoother. And end of games, teams were losing games because, like, opponents were getting free timeouts We saw it in the finals, like where if they review an out of bounds call, it's essentially a free timeout to draw up a play. And we saw the Suns on the uh, the Valley Oop. I think I'm pretty sure that was absolutely a a review where absolutely. And and more importantly, I think teams are losing fans. Like there'd be people would get into games and be like, "Wow, I'm really enjoying this 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 NBA game, this playoff game." And then at the end, when it gets dragged out to such a dramatically, you know kind of grueling degree they'd be like i'm off this you know yeah like, yeah i, can't I know, believe I know you experienced that firsthand i wonder if there's data yeah. like does, does the league have data like do they literally use viewers i, mean, I could cer- i could I'm understand the I'm argument they have the data i think getting a hold of it would be yeah a, 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 i can understand the argument that like it gives people more time to find out hey we're still in the last minute of this game uh, honestly you know, to, to honestly i i don't think you see a, a rule change if this was purely about getting it right you know what i mean yeah, I think I think changes like this come from a money standpoint. Yeah, it could be true. John, what's your what's your best thing? 
Well, my best thing will be pretty darn brief because the, it didn't last long at all. But when I heard the news that Mark Gasol had been traded back to the Grizzlies, <laughs> uh, my heart was a flutter. And I felt, I don't know about you, Keith, I felt so much emotion and was on a, almost like a, you ever have like a body high? No, you haven't had a body high. Uh, you ever, yeah, I've passed uh, out a few times and coming back to. Uh, okay, okay there amazing. you go. There you go. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Like it was one of the, it was just like that until, and, and this is my worst of the week, my cream of wheat, worst yeah. of the week. Yeah. I read the rest of the tweet <laughs> where I really, and that's, it shows you like the relativity because I, it's like one of those tweets, you know, a couple sentences and then a, a, another sentence. And those first two sentences, I lived a lifetime. Classical gas started playing. Like I, I was played <laughs> by Bruce Willis. I went through my whole life. Yeah. Me and Mark embraced at the end in like a garden in Malaga. Like it was amazing. And then I read the rest and realized it's just yet another uh, Grizzlies cap machination. And he's so, in fact retiring away to Spain. And so that I was, was in, and then I was, you know, just, it, oh, it was all snatched away. So that's amazing. It's a perfect transition. Thank you from our steak and eggs. Best thing to our cream of wheat. Worst of week. But we haven't talked about this. I said this on Grits and Grinds. I had the same thing. Uh, Where like, if like within an instant, I knew that Marcus Hall would not play on the Grizzlies, but I still like got super excited when I saw like the top of the tweet. I was like, huh? We, I was like, we talked about this. Marcus Hall's oh, yeah. coming back. Just and then like I was the, like, oh, the yeah, cognitive well, dissonance I experienced yeah. where, I was, where I was like, you know, I'm the guy who wanted Jonas Valanciunas out of here. And then I'm like, Gasol, perfect fit. <laughs> well, you know, like, I'm just like, yeah, pick him up. <laughs> well, so the funny thing, this, this could be another steak and eggs. So Gasol is going to, you know, just stay in Spain. He's not even going to come over to the Grizzlies. Uh, you know, he's still going to be on the roster. Maybe, maybe to, to Wednesday until Wednesday uh, when this Ernan Gomez deal goes through. Maybe longer. I'm not sure. I've been confused about what the Grizzlies are actually doing as far as the the order of operations, but he's going to, as of this afternoon, it was announced, he's going to play basketball in the Spanish second division for a team that he owns. That's lit. Oh, brilliant. That might Marketing. be a better comedy film than J.R. Smith goes to college. Heavy <laughs> flex. So he owns this team. I don't know how to pronounce it. Garona. I feel like you do G? know how to pronounce it. I don't know. Uh, it's based Chuck, in Catalonia. This is your chance to speak Spanish. Go, go, go. And I don't know how to spell. He's going Catalan to play. Nah. So he's going to I play gotta... with this in the second division of the Spanish league. Like, is this a is this a a league where he can gain promotion? Does is he, he like increasing the value of his team by trying to a get them promoted to, to the top? It's a brilliant move. Or is it like an ego thing where he just needs to, after having Andre Drummond take away his minutes, <laughs> he needs to feel good again about the sport? Ah, <laughs> God, that is a low. <laughs> Could be. I mean, how? I know we have all these documentaries on like Leeds United and Netflix had I'll one. Watch, I'll watch. We Corona. got to get. Yeah. Amazon send a film crew with Marcus Saul as he tries to gain promotion for the mighty Garona. Here's Marcus Saul pregame in his garden. My, 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 my Corona. Yeah, I got, I got, I got to, I got to get that shirt. Uh, Chuck, what's your, what's your worst thing? So, uh, my worst thing, and I'll go back to the Hall of Fame speech. My worst thing is, and I might have done this before, but like, man, I'm just really like my whole opinion on Paul Pierce is just changed. I used to hate his guts. I used to think he looked like an unhoused person. Uh, playing basketball transient, transient. Um, look like he shaved with like dirty Budweiser cans. Um, he wasn't <laughs> somebody I found aesthetically pleasing, but man, his hall of fame speech started with him thanking the nine teams that passed him up in the NBA draft by name, each individual franchise. I feel like this is another well-worn move that you're falling for, but go ahead. But I mean, whatever. Maybe this is the first year I pay attention to Hall of Fame speeches. But <laughs> that was just one of the things that you made, content starved maniac. That, that's it, right? <laughs> uh, th but then he has this ESPN piece that is just so incredible. He uh, he talks about his now infamous uh, stripper poker night, where uh, he <laughs> got stabbed in the face. 
what well, no the one where he was oh. on in, when he was on instagram live and oh, didn't know okay. how instagram <laughs> live yeah, worked yeah, yeah. and um that was the end of his espn career that was it but apparently he wasn't he wasn't happy at espn before that and he said quote they make you talk about lebron too much they make you talk about <laughs> lebron all the time and then he just goes off on all the like people who kind of like were calling him out um and they how's this your worst of the week this sounds fantastic well no he's saying. saying the worst is that it makes him like Paul oh, Pierce. This you, guy he's you, despised yeah. i love for... him but my, my one of my favorite parts was like uh, uh doc rivers and danny Ainge were always telling him to pass the ball and <laughs> this is my favorite quote they wanted me to pass the ball more well who do they want me to pass the ball to Juan. Jer- jerry welsh <laughs> <laughs> i'd rather Take a bad shot, then pass it to Jerry Welsh. Shots fired, dude. Wow. He just doesn't care. This is on that Jordan level. I meant I will watch this. this it also incredible. sounded like beforehand in this in this like rant about the ESPN stuff that he was trying to like get uninvited from the Hall of Fame. Cause he said, and I quote, these MFers in the Hall of Fame, some did uh implied cocaine effing battery what the f did i do i'm just having a good time look at all these people he's like just yelling about the people in the hall of fame like this before is a the speech with f-bombs yeah no, this wasn't no, in the actual no, no. Speech. this was just like this a, was in the a, espn a, article yeah a quote or no giving. the s i think it's sports illustrated i'm not sure it wasn't espn um but yeah he <laughs> yeah he's talking about he's talking about i'm i'm divorced <laughs> i yeah. could do that he said Some i'm divorced, all doing i'm retired i'm it. having fun and you all are married while you're doing it that's oh. that's paul pierce quotes yeah outstanding uh, he's like omar from the wire on stand shout out <laughs> rest in peace all right oh man all right man all 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 the uh the oh. hbo legends are dying we lost omar and then we lost clegg from eastbound and down that's true. Two of yeah. the, two of the yeah. greatest characters in HBO history. Well, and, now, do... and now Chuck and I like Paul Pierce again. What's oh. happening? Black well, I'll do white. my worst thing. My worst thing is apparently multiple New Orleans Pelicans players are practicing in Nashville right now. And I have to find out about it through Twitter. There's no web of spies that can be like delivering this information to me. I think Twitter is your web. Of do I have to set that up? Like, how do I get that? I need it. Like, if there's NBA players are pricing in that, I, mean, I want to know, man. Kind of bummed. I, 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 there have been a couple of times where I've heard about uh, NBA players in local, like, uh, tournaments or, or like, kind of pro am style. Yeah, games. I know we have the pro ams and, and some of the NBA players like stop in for that. I know there's been a lot of those guys, but like, the Pelicans having kind of unofficial workouts somewhere, man. I need to. I need. I need to. I need to set up some kind of informational network. I got to send out some spies. Um, I don't know the first thing about doing a, that. You need a street that, team. Yeah, I need. Do I? I just walk into like a TJ Fridays and I like give somebody forty dollars. I'm like, hey, if you hear anything, no. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, those were our cream of wheat worst of weeks. Now it is time. For the infamous Butter or Parquet Eastern Conference preview, the way this works and what the Ooh. name means, we're going to look at every team, every team, every offseason, unless they're the Thunder, they attempt to get better. They try to improve. Every fan base usually is optimistic. And even the coaches, the players think we're going to be better than we were last season. Obviously, not every team can get better. This is where John gets confused. Um, this is not about win totals because win totals are a zero sum game. You could I got it. theoretically improve. And, uh, and this is a rubric for how we're doing it. We're basing it on the roster that each team ended the season with, like post trade deadline or whatever you had in the playoffs. We're assuming guys who weren't seriously hurt. We're assuming maybe they were fully healthy. Your OG Ananobis and Pascal Siakmas, let's say they were healthy. It is fair in a situation of a major injury, um, like a Clay Thompson or a Spencer Dinwiddie. Like Spencer Dinwiddie leaving the Nets does not make the Nets worse no, because he right. did not play for the Nets. All right, it's not confusing. We're just That's trying to make this a spoiler for our Nets preview. <laughs> as simple as possible, we're going to look at each team in the Eastern Conference and try to figure out did this team get better? And I think this year, I've already said every team can't get better. If I had to, 
I could argue the case that they did. I think this is a, is a it feels like an especially difficult season where no one is taking a clear step back. Maybe that's an easy, easy way to say it. No I one is saying. Makes, I think that's what makes a game so difficult to me is that yeah. just the inherent in- excitement of draft picks. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to not argue that each team is butter. But for yeah. me this year, like how I try it, because I really didn't want to make this mistake again. I am a, I'm approaching draft picks with a healthy skepticism. So I think that's very helpful. Something that, that, that I used was if I'm depending a lot in quote unquote internal development, yeah. all right, you didn't, maybe you didn't really get that much better. If you're depending on rookies, you, you didn't get that much better. And I need to explain the name, which I have not even done yet. We've been throwing that around. Did this team <laughs> get better, which we call butter? Are you butter? Or are these supposed improvements just a cheap imitation? Yeah. Are they, are they, Parquet, not Which, real. For those, for those who were not born, in the, in like for those uh, younger than I don't know, probably thirty six. Uh, parquet was a yeah, uh, those younger than LeBron a, James was, was a BS butter. Yeah, it was a fake. <laughs> yeah, it's and so a basketball floor. It yeah. is the it is the parquet. So it's it works so much. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful it's a pun. Beauty. We're never going to let it go, despite so half our listeners having no idea what we're saying. We're going to do this in alphabetical <laughs> order. We're going to start with Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks started terribly last year, but then made the Eastern Conference Finals. They lost from last year's team. Chris Dunn, who was hurt the whole year, and Tony Snell. That's essentially it. Uh, big Bruno, and, big Bruno. Uh, Bruno Fernando's gone. Anyeka Nkongu is injured, going to miss a lot of time. They brought in DeLon Wright. They brought in our boy, Gorgie Jang. And then they drafted a couple guys, Jalen Johnson, Shreve Cooper. They also signed my guy, Timothy Luwabo Cabarro. This is a t- this is a tough one from the start where I feel like optimism for the Hawks is sky high. Like, it, how could it not be? There's nothing you could feel bad about. They have a young star. Most of their team is young. I'm not even sure how to rule on DeAndre Hunter. He missed a lot of the playoffs, so he's going to be healthy next year. You know, you. I think it's fair to assume Cam Reddish will be better. Kevin Herter could be better. There's no reason Trey Young won't be better. So is this a, is this a difficult one, or is this a an easy slam dunk butter? Well, I know I just said I wasn't going to pay too much attention to draft picks, but since there's so little movement here, I'm going to bring up that they did get Jalen Johnson at 20th, who's probably a better player than the Grizzlies traded up to get at like eight. Jalen so, Johnson like, looks awesome in summer league, but he might not even play. This team I, yeah. is so deep. John yeah, Collins, I'm Danilo also, Gallinari. I'm also like just I'm no longer in the business of doubting this uh, general manager and, and team. So I'm going to I'm going to go throw it throw go ahead and throw my hat in the the butter realm. I just yeah. believe in what these guys are I mean, doing. We, I, and and honestly, I, Gorgie Jang and Delon Wright seem like ample replacements for the Flotsam and Jetsam that right. we started. So I mean, Chuck, I don't think we're disputing. We're not even talking about they're good or not. Did did are those no. just small improvements? Is that enough to say they're butter? I think um, getting a little defensive help, Delon Wright. Uh, yeah. gives you that and a little switchability. Dang is like another guy who could shoot, stretch the floor, and play a little defense. So that's really all you need. You know, yeah. the margins get a little stronger, and the development of Trey, he's he's going to be, if he's not already a superstar, this next season is probably when we crown him a super, superstar. And then, yeah. like, if we and, get into, like, the numbers game a little bit, like, I was not super excited about like the prospects of giving John Collins a ton of money, but I feel like they got away with giving him just enough to be a pretty awesome deal. They have, I mean, they, they have the space yeah. to pay these guys right now. And so like, yeah. it just, it's not going to hurt them. I think with those guys, like Collins could get a little better. All these guys could get a little bit better. And Where? that's enough. That's enough for me to say, yeah, I think, I think that why the improvement might be, as we say, marginal, no, I say that right, margin or margin or margin or no. Uh, yeah, so so that's a that's a straight butter for the Atlanta Hawks. Let's go to the Boston Celtics. They they got rid of Kimball Walker, Evan Fournier, and also Tristan Thompson. Also the deadweight coach Brad Stevens. Also the deadweight big booty semi Ajoyoloy. Semi Ojoloy Bill Simmons, yes, is also gone. Uh, they brought in Dennis Schroeder, Josh Richardson. And on Wednesday, Juancho Hernan Gomez. Also, Enos Cancer, and they have a new coach, Ime Udoka. This team struggled last year. 
I think they underperformed for how good they were. So I'm really struggling again with this exercise. Are the additions of Schroeder and Josh Richardson enough to offset uh, losing Kimball Walker and then the, the, the late season pickup of Evan Fournier? I think under the terms of our agreement, yeah, this is an easy parquet. Okay. Because they've lost their arguably second or third best player. Now we can argue all day long long about how good Kimba is going to be elsewhere, but for them, you know, he was important to what they do. Oh, oh, I left out a big one. They also got Al Horford. So Al Horford, I think, I they think did Al add him. So that's as, that- as as bad as he was in Philly and as and as you know underutilized he was in Oklahoma City. He's done well in Boston yeah. before, and he was good <clears throat> on the yeah. Thunder. They just didn't want any didn't part play him. of people yeah. being good. Yeah, they just had no interest in that. So for me, you know, but I still think whether or not we think Kemba has a place in this league as an impact player anymore. Yeah. They're just strictly parquet. Okay. What do you think, Chuck? I think they're better defensively. Um, They should be tough defensively. And, you know, if you got Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum taking their leaps, I know we don't want to do internal development. They, you know, my big question is coaching and I sure, know that, sure. that, that bringing in a new young coach who historically has had good relationships with his players could bring that extra like energy that puts that puts you know them in a different uh headspace for competition but I'm not I, I think Schroeder playing for a contract and Josh Richardson finally a lot of lost money a lot of lost <laughs> money. He's got to be playing with a chip on his shoulder and he's better, def- significantly better defensively than, than, um, than Kemba. I, I, I just think defense, they're going to, they're going to be nasty and they have two young, you know, two young yeah. ball players who can score. So they, had, mean, a, they had a rough year last year and I'm, I'm going to weigh heavily on, on, I think the Al Horford edition is going to be maybe that yeah, piece that really ties stability. the room together. Yeah. Um, kind of I'm, distributing the ball. Like they, they still don't have anyone who like creates really. Um, this is a tough one I'm, for me. I'm going to penalize. I'm counting uh, the Evan Fournier debacle as some sort of off season voodoo hoodoo. I, I also <laughs> don't know if that they, for the second year in a row, they, they, uh, they have this player, Trade Exception. Beautiful. Uh, I, I don't know. He's foreign from out of town. I don't know where he's from. Oh, is he? Uh, but yeah, he's seventeen million dollar trade exception. I don't know what they're gonna do. That's right now. We're not gonna count that, but they could bring in another player. Um, I, was, I was so lost with that. Were bit. you lost with trying to accept so you? Lost with that bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Incredible. Oh man, I just got it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at the roster. I'm like, is he mispronouncing Tremont Waters? Like. <laughs> No, that's, uh, like, oh, the, think, that's the punishing part of late. I think podcasting. so. I think I'm being misled here by my own exercise because I believe this team's going to win a lot more games than they did last year. But maybe they're butter. I mean, maybe they're parquet. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're they're actually worse. I mean, is is 82 games of or is a full season of Horford and Schroeder and Josh Richardson? I mean, like that's that's not nothing. Like, is that better than like Kimball Walker playing two games of Al Horford is pretty rough, but I'm saying, is that, is that, you know, cause you're getting two thirds of the games. I don't know. I guess I'm going to lean slightly butter, but I I might be wrong. I think John, you probably uh, correctly followed the rules. I was trying trying to get there, man. So here's my final take. I think the, you know, the bubble took a lot out of them. They did fight COVID last year. I think they will be slightly better this year. That'll work. Let's do Fair the enough. Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets basically lost uh, Jeff Green, Landry Shamit, DeAndre Jordan, are the important ones. Tyler Johnson's gone. Chris Chios is gone. Spencer didn't win. He didn't play. Say, He's gone. You say important. I say impotent. So uh, the they brought in Patty Mills, James Johnson, Paul Millsap, Lamarcus Aldridge. Javon Carter might be there. They got DeAndre Bembry. And then they drafted a couple guys that probably won't play that much. 
this team was awesome last year. I think they're slightly more awesome uh, with the kind of the depth pieces they have. So I'm going to say just a tiny pat butter. I'm going to say they restocked this fridge with a lot of just fat cubes, slices, oh. logs of butter. Oh, yeah. they, they got rid of Oleo. some like guys who like don't need to be playing anymore. And now they just added a bunch of role players who they can get over the, get through their, you know, sundry weird, injuries and Kyrie disappearances all the more easier. I think this team's a lot better. All right. Yeah. Chuck, do you, same. you agree? It's yeah. Easy. Pat I think it's- Mills alone gives you that stability uh, and experience. And Paul Millsap, dude, James Johnson, like they can play small. They can play big. They can play everything. They can play every way. And, it, and they have just enough. Like Javon Carter, if he plays, gives you just enough defense out there. To yeah, like he's home. not going to let you down for the few yeah. minutes he plays. I feel whenever. like the Nets are playing like a version of 2K that's like two or three years older than it's supposed to be mm-hmm. and are just picking up all these players that have really high ratings from yeah, like yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's do Charlotte. Charlotte's an interesting one. This is a team that I've been like kind of hyped on. This exercise, a little bit of a spoiler, uh, Maybe, maybe I got a little too carried away. Um, with LaMelo Ball excitement. But they lost Devontae Graham. They got rid of Malik Monk. They got rid of the uh, the lesser Martin twin. Cody Zeller is gone, replaced by Mason Plumley. They also Wash. added Ish Smith, Kelly Oubre, and then they drafted in the lottery. Uh, James Booknight also picked up some athletes. Uh, Kai Jones, JT Thor, et cetera. John, I feel like you, you want to scream parquet at this mess, right? Yes, I think it's a, like the easiest one. I'm ready to crush your dreams. I know you want to say Kelly Oubre makes it all all the butter, but Ish Smith is not going to be. I, I'm not nothing. I'm about to say is an endorsement of Devonte Graham and Malik Monk, but at least they can shoot. At least yeah. they can do the things that the, the people around the Mello Ball need to be doing. Yeah. And now, and really, the Hornets to me. Here's why they're parquet. They had to be entering this offseason like, we have to get rim protection. We have to get center help. And they didn't do any of that. The, the, the guys that they got, Plumley, Oubre, and, and, you know, young Kai Jones are going to contribute nothing on the defensive end, and, and they're going to be left with some real problems. I think this team, of all the teams we looked at, when you said that thing about every team, you could make an argument for getting butter. I was like, well, I don't know how you're going to say this for the show. Well, I guess if I, if I, if we want to get weird, do we think right. Gordon Hayward playing more than half the season? Like, does that help? Like they were above 500 when Gordon Hayward played last I, year. Again, I think this so, team is going to be, is going to win more games, but yeah. I have to, I'm going with, did the team get butter or parquet in the off season trying so hard to play by the rules? I yeah. think this is an easy parquet. In this situation, this, this is a disaster to me. Also. Oh, see, I don't think it's a disaster. I don't think they're the Uber thing. helps not a too lot much if he sunk can get in back the, to it. Well, I mean, Uber, that's like it. he's a guy that like I'm like intrigued by. But we now have multiple teams who are like, no, I don't want that 23 year old guy. Now I don't want that 24 year old guy. And so it's like, right. all right, maybe like there, there's there's solid evidence that maybe he doesn't help your team at all. I mean, I know the Warriors sure. fans hated watching him last year. They were a mess. Like he, so he didn't fit in kind of on that yeah, team. Right. Well, I'm, and, I'm not, I feel like you're arguing in my favor again, but no, like, I'm saying, I'm, I'm for, saying, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, gotcha, I'm trying gotcha. to pull back with how much you were complimenting Ubre on my behalf to let people oh, know I'm not that gotcha. excited about Kelly Ubre guys. Yeah. I, I don't think I like him. About. Right. Like he's gorgeous. Oh yes. Sexy. Dear Lord. I like Kelly Ubre. But yeah. I'm not. I am excited about this team. I think it'll be fun because I do think Lamelo He's an Ball, NBA elf. <laughs> Lamelo NBA Ball. Elf. You know, from year one to year two, that's where we will have the development. And I think the pieces around him. PJ Washington is good. Miles Bridges had got so much better last year, and I think Mason Plumley honestly fits okay with them. Like hmm. they do need more shooting. The loss of Monk hurts. I think Ish Smith is a quality backup, but like they do need some like one other probably shooter to be actually good. So like I think it's a, a lot closer than you're saying, John, as far as their improvements. But I also. I, I think I'm leaning slightly to the parquet side. The players they let go were so integral to what they did. 
maybe this is one of those things where they needed to let those guys go to make this. This is an in- insane stress test on Lamelo Ball. Yeah, I, I, th- I think, man, if if you get if you get healthy Gordon Hayward and then you get PJ Miles playing the same thing, and then I guess if Book and I get anything, I don't know. Then I'm going to a rookie. Chuck, are you? Are you as strong as John on all parquet, or are you feeling optimistic? So I about- mean, like they they got to believe that uh, Lamelo is going to take some sort of leap because they pulled the shooting from around him, and now it's kind of just in his hands at this point. And I think the league kind of got some tape on Lamelo at the second half of the season, and I don't know if that's like the rookie wall, but it was a short season, so I didn't imagine that would be the thing. But he he kind of flattened out towards the end of the year. If he doesn't take a leap, I mean like a leap leap, like all-star, they're worse, without a question. He looks, ch- they did. He looks- I will say for, for the Hornets people, they like they got a first round pick for Devontae Graham. Like good work. Like that's not gonna be a first round pick. Yeah. Oh that's no. Be, oh, the Pelicans gonna, are making the playoffs? Yeah, that's gonna be too You're right. Pelicans are making the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are right. Um, I but I think I think again, I'm I'm not divorcing this team as my league pass. Uh, they you know, could like be fun. fun team. I think they're gonna be so much fun. Yeah, they could be fun, but still be worse than last year. And they're kind of yeah. they kind of took everybody by surprise. And they had like you know they didn't play in the bubble, so they had fresh legs against a lot of the East that played in the playoffs. And I don't know. We'll see. I, I think I, they'll be more fun to watch. I think yeah. losing guys like Devontae, Malik Monk, and I mean, they played a lot of Caleb Martin and Cody Zeller minutes too. I, I think they'll be more fun to watch. It's just I think it's I think this is a sign of a, a franchise that doesn't know what they're doing. And and, and I, we're gonna get this later more when uh, we talk about like the Pacers. But like I don't like adding guys like Ish Smith and TJ McConnell who need so much usage to prove their worth to a team at where they already have a position player who needs I mean, so much usage to prove his worth. Ish Smith is just going to be a backup point. He's not yeah, taking I know, but to minutes get away from out, anybody. To get anything out of Ish Smith, he, he, he's just a very high usage player, and I just don't – I don't like players like – I like Ish Smith on a team where they need a high usage backup point guard. I don't like Ish Smith or TJ McConnell you're, you're right. Oh, you're worried the ball's going to get out of Kelly Ray's hands. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just don't like it, you know, on, on teams where where – you have your, your high usage. I would say we'll move on from the, from the Hornets keep this going, but I do think it's maybe an interesting philosophical debate of like how much value does Devonte Graham, a high volume three point shooter against compared to a very pedestrian, steady journeyman point guard. Like, do they want from the backup point position? Hey, just chill. Like just do some stuff. Maybe they wanted less variance. I don't know. Maybe they wanted that first round pick slash two second round picks from the Pelicans. Uh, we are all unfortunately uh, parquet. I'm the I'm still kind of optimistic though about the Hornets. Let's go to the Chicago Bulls. This one I think is easy. They had the biggest off season. Uh, they got rid of the exceptionally cool Thad Young. Traded away Larry Markinen for a first. Got rid of t- uh, Tomas Sadaransky. Say that again, Temple. so we can just be in utter disbelief again. They they got a first round pick for Larry Markinen. Uh, they then sent a first round pick to bring in DeMar DeRozan. They also brought in Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, Derek Jones Jr., um, some other flotsam and jetsam. This is a pretty clearly the Bulls are butter, right? Bulls are butter. Yeah. 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 Doesn't get Done. any easier than this. Book it. I love one it. Of, one of the great off seasons. Even if, even if all these things fall apart, just the assets they accrued for stuff well, they didn't even want. Well, I mean, I think you mean asset. I mean, they were kind of okay. yeah, there you throwing go. assets all over the place, building this quote-unquote right. super team that's going to get the ninth seed. Um, but this team is improved. We will mess around with you uh, in a future episode. Let's go to the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cleveland Cavaliers. They got Evan Mobley, possibly a franchise-changing rookie. Center they, to play behind uh, they, the guy they just paid a ton of money. They got Lowry Markinen. Yeah, I don't. They get it. got Ricky Rubio, who does raise the level everywhere he goes. Usually, they got rid of favorite son Larry Nance Jr. And it's about it. Tarian Prince, see you, do- see you later. Matthew Della Vadova, uh, see you later. This team brings in Ricky Rubio, Evan Mobley, Larry Markinen, and gets rid of Larry Nance Jr. 
That's butter, right? They're butter. I mean, they're bad. They're don't get me wrong. They're they bad. They will not be good. But they're but they're. I think they're clearly. I think they're clearly butter. It's it's Rubio. It's Rubio for me that like he he's like a steady hand and yeah. will not be you know a mess. And there's a lot of you okay. know there's a lot of like busyness in their in their front court. I mean, in their back court and no, well, both. and their front court. Both, both. yeah, yeah. no it. wings. And uh, there's just busyness going on. So it'll be inter- interesting to see if it's going to be like competition raising, you know, uh, the level of play of everybody or just a bunch of people who get lost in the shuffle and nobody knows what their role is. So, Chuck, I mean, d- does an NBA team need wings? I believe that's a, an important. I mean, they're going the for modern it. MV- M- they're going for point guards and centers. They're going for it. Um, I mean, listen, uh, yeah. they, we're not we're not overlooking Shetty Osman. Shout out Shetty Bob. I mean, um, Isaac Okoro is kind of fun. I'll, I'll say Parquet. Um, I think the mess they've made in their front court with Lowry Markin and Evan Mobley competing with the guy they just gave tons of money to. Let's not forget Kevin Love is still there. Um, I think I think Ricky Rubio is not an asset that takes that that makes up for the loss of Larry Nance, who was one of their best players last year and kind of held that team together uh, for long stretches. Cool. And I, uh, furthermore, I think uh, Darius Garland needs needs as much as, as he can get. Um, I know it's fun and become kind of uh, uh, trendy to bash Colin Sexton, but like they're they're, they're what they do is is, is sex land, and it's, and it's really the only hope they have. And I don't understand what clogging that front court up with a, after taking Evan Mobley third overall. I don't understand what's going on there. I think this team got worse. If if Evan Mobley's not terrible. <clears throat> Right. Like I feel, I, for me, it's like I don't know. It seems straightforward ish. That's like also, you know, they, they I just have, have, to, have, I have to judge. I have to judge yeah. the the giving Jared Eric Jared Allen all that money as part of this off season and part of this grade as well because I just don't really. I like Jared Allen fine, but I don't. I it's the type of player I. You would think not the amount of throw. money he got is going to change his his play? I would not throw. I would not throw that kind of money at a guy to build a team who I don't think helps you on either side of the ball that much. Listen, Nate and, Duncan, you know, we're not judging the contract. We're judging no, but, if they but, got but, better but, or but worse. But it shows, it shows a philosophy. They're like, they're, if you give somebody that much money, you expect them to play. You also expect Evan Mobley to play. You also expect Laurie Markin and Kevin Love to play. Like When you make a soup like this, it's just like borscht from hell. It's just the ingredients are all wrong. I think they're worse. Parquet. Chuck, did you uh you're 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 all butter, I'm I mean, all butter. I think I I love Jared Allen and I think he's like he fits with um their core outside I mean maybe Mobley and him can't play heavy minutes together, but if you can stagger them, you can especially bigs tend to take a while to age up and, and how many and to players be, are we gonna stagger here? I well, mean I Kevin mean, Kevin loves not playing. He's not right. playing, he that's probably a, won't that's be on how the I'm team. doing it. I'm just I'm yeah. you know and, and, you know, Mobley is supposedly like can, can switch and can play down. So it, it, they could go super big with, you know, I'm just saying this team, and, this team stunk last year. They were really bad. This team won like seven competent, of the last 40 games. Yeah. <laughs> bringing in a competent point guard and a shooter, and it, but they're well, worse. I'm just going to go worse because they're Cleveland. Fair enough. <laughs> like you, you feel like you guys aren't playing the game now. <laughs> I, I play in the game. I, I don't think adding Ricky Rubio is enough in the NBA anymore to be a slam dunk butter. I don't see but I'm just saying I don't they, see what you're saying only, at all. They only lost their backup power forward, who we liked, Larry Nance Jr. But he wasn't and, really and, their backup. And, and like a third power string forward. wing, Tarian Prince. He was, uh, you know, he, Larry Nance was a better center for them than, than uh, Jerry. I Allen like was. Larry Nance, but the guy yeah. played like 20 minutes a game. I mean, it's not uh, Ricky Rubio probably should be playing 20 minutes a game. This is a team that has their guard situation. Uh, that's the only thing they have. So I, I just don't get it. I don't think Ricky Rubio, who is a, is a, is a slam dunk butter anymore. Like I, I I'm, I'm as at a loss with your decision as you are with mine. I mean, I think, I think Sexton and Garland are getting better. And then you have, then you're adding Mobley. And Rubio it wasn't wasn't yeah. Sexton in trade talks last year. Everyone what, talks about always, Sexton in trade talks. Always. I mean, like, so like yeah. and, Garland kind of rules. And, awesome. and we have to we have to like t- judge the team. I think as Sexton's it stands. good too. 
and the team as it stands is just confusing. And when I'm confused, oh, I go, see a hundred percent agreement there. No one said yeah. this team is so confusing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I look at this make roster sense. and I can't, I can't. Figure All right. Let's go to the, let's go to the, let's get, let's get equally, you know, in consternation about the Detroit, Detroit Pistons. <laughs> This team stunk, obviously. They faded for Cade. They got Cade. So they got Cade Cunningham. They got Kelly Olenek. They got rid of Mason Plumley, Wayne Ellington, and Seku Dimboyu, and Roddy Magruder. Eh? But they've, yeah, I, From I worse we'll to say, worse? We'll say, we're going to say, we're going to say marginally butter because of the addition by subtraction of all the players that you just named and then having the lottery pick. So I will say marginally butter because, you know, we're, we're talking about the dregs here. I can't even, I can't even remotely come up with an angle. Yeah, what are like, you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to tell me about Kelly Olenek? Hot, yeah. hot, hot finish in his rocket. They're, they were the worst team last year. They're going to be the worst team this year, unless Cade Cunningham's amazing. Yeah. I mean, Wayne Ellington is like, this is a team that like many teams just benched anyone who played competently. Right. Or it's like, oh, Dennis like Wayne Smith Ellington had fun. a good stretch when you get him out of there. Corey Joseph, <laughs> like, you're playing too well, man. Um, why don't you chill out? Uh, I don't think this team did virtually nothing other than draft Cade Cunningham and just wave lots of players. I don't even want like I get I give them an incomplete I don't know, they didn't do anything. <laughs> Chuck, what do you what do you think? I mean I, I don't know if the you know, if we're going to see like big jumps from like Sadiq Bay or if okay. Killian Hayes is even going to be like, thank you, play. Like thank you these... for filling time. Yeah, we don't need I to don't... fill time. We can move on. I mean, yeah. Just... No, I don't know if, they, if they're going to get better. I'm and, not going to give them an incomplete. I, I, I'm, I'm giving them nothing. I'm going, I'm going. Usually bad teams stay bad. So I'm going to go. B- 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 they, get, they get better or worse. They they were tw- they were twenty and fifty two. Marginally butter for me. Mar- a little butter. I'm just uh, I'm I can't even uh, read that team. The- b- butter. Okay, fine. Butter. They're butter because maybe they'll play their guys more. I don't know. Uh, no. The Indiana Pacers similarly did nothing as far as their roster. Like Tory Craig. They yeah they had Tory Craig. They drafted the super old but very very cool Chris Duarte. They got <laughs> I do rid like of that Dun- second pick quite a bit too. They though. got rid of sorry, Isaiah sorry. Jackson. Looks yeah. really really good in summer yeah. league. Um, they got rid of Doug McBuckets. They got rid of Aaron Holiday because Justin didn't want to be around him anymore or something. I made that part up. But <laughs> they they got rid of Nate Bjorkgren and they hired Rick Carlisle. That's five to ten wins. Okay, right? they're butter. Never All right, mind. Is this butter Top on the five coach? coach. They're, right. they're butter. Yeah. Let's do they're it. Gonna, they're going to play defense. Um, TJ Warren is, might not come back for so a while. That's, so that's a great point. TJ Warren missed the entire season, and also the reports are not promising right now. So, yeah. like, he's still no recovering reports slowly. on any player is promising right now. It's insane. It just sounds like everyone's going to miss the entire season. Like, Kawhi's dead. Like, it's it's so yeah. sad right now. Um, something so in the I, guess we're, I guess we're all just saying this is essentially the same team, but they got a better coach, so we'll give them a tiny bit butter. Uh, Chuck's Miami Heat had a big offseason. Yeah. They brought in 100 years of Kyle Lowry, Markeith Morris, and P.J. Tucker. Mm. They unloaded Goran Dragic, Kenny Nunn, Ariza, Iguodala, Bielitsa, and Precious Achua. Easy butter. Just the Cal Lowry does it. Does it yeah, all? Chuck, I'll let you go first here. Easy, easy better. We're gonna get uh, high level point guard play we haven't seen since Mario Chalmers. Um, and there's Norris gonna Cole. be. There's gonna be. There's gonna be. Uh, I think Bam takes a leap, another leap this year. I think Hero is gonna. How many leaps be, does he get to take? This is he gets this to is take another leap this year. <laughs> He's taking another um, one. <laughs> he gets another leap. Um, That's awesome. I, th- I think playing with I think playing with Lowry is gonna catch so many lobs. He's gonna get so much open looks uh, from that offense. He's gonna be and twisting his ankles, falling over Lowry's body after he's he uh, he flops trying to take charges. Charge, Lowry's yeah. always laying on the ground in the paint. It's Guys, this is all this is this is all unnecessary. <laughs> uh, 
we're gonna get we're gonna get Tyler Tyler Hero running the the bench unit and actually giving like the reins when when the older guys are getting their their breath and uh, yeah I think I like this team it's yeah. butter he's like easy butter easy butter yeah I think just getting that high in talent uh, and if, of Kyle Lowry should do a lot if if o- Oladipo can be like seventy percent of what he was at, when he played for three games for us last we're year we're still doing that bit yeah how dare you. <laughs> Sorry, you ruined it. Uh, Milwaukee. So Milwaukee won uh, added the title. Grayson Allen. They are parquet. Added Grayson Allen. They are parquet. I like how John's Grayson Allen like hatred is like far surpassed mine. I'm just happy he's gone. I did not dislike oh. him. He was an impediment standing the way of my dreams of D'Anthony Melton. I thought his performance was fine on the court. Um, the Bucks, though, replaced Bryn Forbes with Grayson Allen. They replaced Jeff Teague with George Hill, and they replaced PJ Tucker with Rodney, Rodney Hood? Hood. I don't know. There's not an equal one for one here. No. This team didn't do a lot. I guess we can count Dante DiVincenzo returning. Um, this is essentially, I think, the same team. I don't know. If I you can give them a, I don't know, a tie. A slam good. dunk, hard on they, parquet. Uh, sure, I will. Okay, I, so so John, you. you <laughs> <laughs> they added the scourge of the league, Grayson Allen. Enjoy, enjoy trying to play that staunch defense with that guy out there. Uh, think- it's going to kill me when he like hits crucial threes in their repeat championship game. It's going to kill me. Um, I think PJ Tucker isn't that big of a deal for them. Um, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. It, it <laughs> isn't. It isn't a huge deal. Um, but it, you know, with with a team like that chemistry matters and i think i think bringing in a caustic character like grayson allen i'm only no one dislikes in the, think, no one in the league he, dislikes well grayson allen. His players yeah, the horrible he's, human being i think he's well liked i think he sets players. up everybody's like pcs for gaming and they love him right. <laughs> i think like i think everyone likes grayson allen he's going to take the role that bryn forbes had playing 19 minutes a game I, uh, <laughs> you don't well, think he's dante DiVincenzo insurance if uh, guys that be. aren't that are not similar, <laughs> Rodney Hood can uh, has surprised me before. So maybe if he pops, it could be. He a whole surprised thing. me when I found out he played on the Raptors last season for a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think it's just they're they're just slightly worse, but they're also going to come in, you know, with that championship swagger, and it, it might they might end up with a better record than last year. But I think on paper they're slightly worse. I'm going to go slightly butter because they've thrown off the shackles of, uh, of the weight of failure. They, oh. they got rid of that. So and I do, th- I do think PJ Tucker, I do think, <laughs> I do think George Hill is good and I don't think they're going to miss PJ Tucker. I don't think they need him, honestly. Uh, so I'll, I'll go slightly butter. It doesn't really matter. They're one of the best two teams in the East and this exercise doesn't really um, interest their fans. Uh, the New York Knicks, I think this one's kind of easy. They had a surprising year last year and they replaced Alfred Payton with Kimball Walker Walker, (laughs) and they did lose Reggie Bullock, but they also got Evan Fournier. They drafted kind of a mishmash of dudes. They might do anything. They did have to say goodbye to Frank Milikina. Oh, and they signed breakfast favorite Dwayne Bacon. Dwayne Bacon. Uh, so the Knicks adding Walker and Fournier to their team last year, that's a that's an improvement. Yeah. Yeah, Chuck, what do you think? Um yeah, Kemba comes home. I, I, I think they needed some scoring, so that'll give them that. And re- losing Reggie Bullock isn't like that big of a deal. So yeah, I'm going better. Yeah, I think it's pretty one of the easier butters on our on our list. Yeah, um, we got four teams left before we get there. I want to tell you guys to visit grindcitymedia.com today for the most up-to-date and exclusive coverage and analysis of the Memphis Grizzlies you can get. Grind City Media is always there, home and road, providing the most comprehensive Grizzlies coverage. Plus, get your... Sorry. Oh, season something... tickets? Did something weird happen to you guys? No. Mm-hmm. One sec. You okay? Yeah, something happens recording. <clears throat> Still says you're recording. Yeah, my garage man thing did a. Uh... Oh yeah.
All right, it's going to be weird. I'm going to pick up this thing on this recording. Where was I? Plus, get your season tickets. No, here we go. All right. Local and regional sports fix from Tigers football, basketball, SEC, and HBCU news all in one spot. For more information and behind the scenes access on the Grizzlies, visit grindcitymedia.com or follow on Twitter at grindcitymedia today. All right, the Orlando Magic are probably going to be terrible next year. But after they traded away Nikola Vucevic last year, they had nothing to that team. They've added their high draft picks, Jalen Suggs and Franz Wagner, plus uh, Disney World aficionado, Robin Lopez. Yeah, Chuck said Kimba come home. Rolo has come home. <laughs> Rolo came home. Will that actually be a negative because he's too close to Disney World to provide any basketball value because he'll be too distracted? <laughs> he's, isn't he living there? Good God. He owns a residence yeah. on on the park, I, I believe. Outstanding. Uh, he stays in Cinderella's castle. I don't know what this team is going to do. I do think they have some intriguing pieces. Jonathan Isaac is another guy who, quote unquote, there was encouraging news. But the encouraging news was the of the there is no timeline variety, which that is not. I do not. There is no it. good news. Anymore. Yeah. Um, just telling me you're doing well, but there's no timeline. No, I'm not. I'm not too fired up. But I still think just adding two high draft picks to this squad. All right. Butter. Why not? Uh, uh, uh. Steve Clifford's gone. They are parquet. Steve Clifford was dragging this team up above the sum of its tawdry parts. I think this team will be will be much worse. I think uh, this is this is my this is one one of one of my two two teams we've we've, we've used Rick Carlisle now to the to contrapunto. Steve Clifford being gone, I think uh, I think kind of neuters any ex- ex- excitation you should have about this team. But I don't think they really. I think they're in full uh, rebuild mode, so it works for what they're doing, I guess. I think um, Markel Fultz, seeing the absolute shit show in Philadelphia, will be energized to become a top three NBA player this year. Um, <laughs> and they will. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't know if rookies ever make a difference. We had this discussion. They are hope packaged. They are. Uh, the future, their dream, but rookies rarely move my needle. It's um, a good, it's a good point. And, these these and, rookies remind me of like when the the when the um, Timberwolves took like Johnny Flynn and another guy. Like I I don't like the smell off of these. And rookies. rookie Rubio. Yeah, I I don't and, like the smell off of these. So guys. I don't know if like you know like bringing in one of the low pie is gonna mess up Mo Bamba. Um, minutes. Oh, if, if he's gonna, reference. If he's gonna be, you know, like he had some promising moments last year. So I'll see. I think they're worse though, because when you rely on two uh, first round draft, well, they're gonna picks, they're gonna be bad. Yeah. yeah, but we only need Jalen Suggs and Franz Wagner to replace James Ennis and Dwayne Bacon. Hmm. Yeah, Those are the I only don't know. Players they might have. not happen. <laughs> it might not happen. <laughs> it might not happen. Those, those are proven NBA guys. Yeah. These guys are not <laughs> proven. So I, I understand your argument. This time, John, I understand the argument. I'm going to yeah. go a uh, little bit, a little bit butter. I mean, Ooh. and you're going to go parquet, Chuck. You think? Uh, I'm parquet. parquet. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm parquet. That's fair. Um, the Philadelphia 76ers. What in the world is going on with this How are we team? allowed to judge this? Do we judge this with or without Ben Simmons? <laughs> I think we judge this that Ben Simmons is gone, right? Okay. Yeah, at the so very the least, <laughs> at the very least, the mojo is gone. Uh, unless um, they get Dame Lillard for him, they're parquet. So Andre Drummond is in for Dwight good. Howard. Um, Not bad. George Jiang is in for Mike Scott. Not bad, but still. The Jaden Springer's in for George Hill. Uh, go Vols. Uh, go Vols. <laughs> uh, and then Ben Simmons says he doesn't want to play there anymore, and they're trying to get rid of him. So is this is just a parquet because they're it's, not going to get value for him? It's abject chaos, and chaos can bring you down. 
Onward and downward, I say. Let's do the Raptors. Yeah. All right. Parquet <laughs> for the 76ers. The Toronto Raptors, a very confusing team last year. I would say healthy. They should have been so much better. It, you know, they they purposely tanked out. They pulled the shoot. They also, so they lost Kyle Lowry. They, everyone else they lost, who cares? Uh, Aaron Baines, DeAndre Bembry, Rodney Hood, Stanley Johnson are gone. They added, we think Goran Dragic is going to stick around and play. They added Scotty Barnes at the very, you know, near the top of the draft, the fourth pick. Um, Precious Achua, Isaac Bonga. So which Raptors am I supposed to judge this game from? Is this the Raptors at the start of the year or the Raptors at the end of the year? I'd say, two very I'd different say as long as you count the Raptors, the non last 15 games when they were tanking hard. I think it's, I mean, this team is so confusing. This team was bad when Kyle Lowry played last year. Yes. Like they were good when he did not play. Right. Cover yours, is, Chuck. I don't know. But if you nothing, heard. None, none of that is, I think the return home and the like psychological benefit of sleeping in your home, in your bed. Yes. Oh, at night, huge. as a man who spends a week on the road yeah. a month the psychological problems that I have to deal with eat and stay. And I'm not, you know, and I'm staying in a really bad this hotel. This team was kicked out of their country for an entire year and forced to live <laughs> in a hotel in Florida. In, in, insane, insane. COVID I don't know what sanity in, in the, like the worst part of Florida too. Yeah. Just, yeah despite all that, I'll still go parquet. They lost Kyle Lowry. <laughs> um, I, I, I yeah. I, I'm going to go parquet. Yeah, I, it's uh, the, the talent the, wise, the Lowry loss. It's confusing. If we want to switch this kind of thing to say, you know, um, OG Ananobi missed a lot of time. Pascal Siakam missed a lot of time. Kyle Lowry missed a lot of time. If those guys are playing full seasons, like we all, I think everyone anticipates probably a better season for the Raptors. There's some confusion when we're like ranking the East teams where you're like, what are the Raptors going to do? Like, are they going are they going to tank again because they got rid of Kyle Lowry or they let him leave? I don't so think so. I, I don't know. So, like, I guess Parquet, you know, I guess Parquet's right, but I also wouldn't be surprised. I think we probably all think they're going to win more games next year. It, 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 this is like, th these guys kind of defeat the exercise. The, they really the, do. The circumstances really do. kind the of. The circumstances are going to be so much better um, than being in Toronto. But I guess you got to say, just replacing Lowry with Dragic and Scotty Barnes, who's kind of a project. We don't really know what the net is going to be there. Our final team is the Washington Wizards. I think they're a fun one. They're a tough one to figure out. They notably lost Russell Westbrook and also Ish Smith, Robin Lopez, and John's guy, Scotty Brooks. <laughs> they brought in Spencer Dinwiddie, Kinsane Clown Posse, Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, Aaron Holiday. They drafted a white stiff shooter in Corey Kispert. This is one where it's like, I feel like the subtractions and additions kind of level out a little bit, but I'm, you know, I'm not sure how to, how to, how to weigh it. Chuck, do you want to go first? Or do you want me to start rambling? I kind of like this. I think um, I'd really like Dinwiddie. And the pieces they got from the Lakers kind of fit with uh, around Brad Beal. I don't know if they're going to be able to play any defense, but they'll be able to put up a bunch of points. So um, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go butter. I think this is an easy butter, and I think this is like one of the more transformative sea changes in a single off season I've ever seen a team pull off without making a ton. You know, like. They were just able were able to cobble together through players I don't even think they really wanted anything to do with anymore. Like a pretty impressive new new team. Like like most of the times you look at these additions and you're like, okay, they got like one starter and then like four guys they're just gonna kind of fit in somewhere. With this, they have like a new starting lineup almost. They have like a new. It's like a transformative effort. I, I'm pretty impressed with what the Wizards pulled off. Uh, this offseason, I think it's one of the easier butters on the list, honestly. Yeah, I, I think they did a great job. I've complimented their moves before on the show, just getting, like you said, multiple guys who, who 
not only can be starters, but are like, you don't feel bad about them being a starter. Like, yeah, like, um, Contavious Caldwell Pope is a good start. Like, he's a good wing player in the NBA. And even like Kuzma, I think Kuzma's a solid starter. Sure, he could be a six man, but then like Montrez is kind of made for the bench score, but like he does stuff. And I think all those pieces, like Chuck said, Spencer Dinwiddie. do fit nicely a- around Brad Beal. And then, and then, yeah, the, the, the Dinwiddie match might even be a, a better. Like a better right. fit. I know Westbrook is his own universe. He does yes. his own thing. And when he finally heated up last year, he carried the Wizards into the postseason. Yeah. So, like, I do want to give some credit to, to that ability of Westbrook and losing that is different. I like where the franchise is a lot better. As far as, like, would last year's Wizards team beat this year's Wizards team? Like, which team would win that theoretical matchup? That where I'm like, you know, I feel like it would be really, really close to me. Also, like, we've taken away the even the opportunity for Brad Beal to sulk about not having the ball because now there is not a player on this team who's not going to defer to Bradley Beal. I He's not going to live through the, you know the rest. There was some performative sulking. I think poor Bradley Beal has resting sulk face. Uh, no, not, I don't. I don't think. On a show like I don't think. I don't think he really felt that bad about it. I just think he has like a face where, like, he, when he starts pouting, it like so everyone's like, "Oh man, he looks so sad." He's contemplative. I, yeah, there, there were some. There were some stormy moments last year, but I do think like he's a guy who like actually like he's he does not pull Ben Simmons' esque moves, and he doesn't. You know, he just that's not in him. But you know, I I, I don't know these pieces. I'm just pretty impressed that they were able to. Because you could have looked at the Russell Westbrook maneuver and been like, "This team has doomed itself for years," and then you and then you just look at it and it's like, "Good lord, they're out of it. They 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 you know this had no effect. This was a I, this I was a sideways agree. venture. You know, I completely agree that they're much better set up going forward. I do think, I do think I'm gonna go slightly parquet. I think last year's team Ooh. might beat them. But I don't know. I mean, Russell Westbrook is a, a, an amazing yeah. regular season basketball player. Um, I, mean, I do think th- I, they could make moves because they do have like too many power forwards. Like if they like yeah. traded away, I don't know if they traded away a Bertans and got in another guy who can play shooting guard or something, then maybe I uh, change it. Like, again, I like what the Wizards have done. I think they're about the same uh, quality as they were last year. As far as Dinwiddie, if Dinwiddie isn't the guy he was on the Nets in the playoffs that year, um, in the bubble, then I might go slightly. We're okay. also depending a lot on Dinwiddie. Yeah, like, it's like I'm, I'm, we haven't I'm, seen him do it a long time. Yeah, Even and if I'm, you don't like you, I, you have like the offense defense, like Kyle Kuzma, Harrell thing that you can do again. Yeah, uh, you know I, I like that. I, you know. I, I like Aaron Holiday. I, I I just like the guys they got. Yeah, if, if Dinwiddie's gone, you don't have a good game manager like Ish Smith there anymore. So I knew this was Ish Smith related. I gotta I gotta hold that. I gotta hold that against him. All right, so we did the whole league according to us. The Hawks got butter. The the Celtics. John thought a little parquet. Chuck and I thought eh, a little butter. We all thought the Nets got butter. The Hornets, sad to say, we all said parquet, the Bulls, all butter. The Cavaliers, very contentiously, I was the only one who thought they got any butter. The Pistons, I refused to give them a grade. John and Chuck both said, yeah, whatever, butter. Um, (laughs) Pacers, butter, based on the coaching. The Heat, all butter. Milwaukee, I thought they got butter. John and Chuck said parquet. Knicks, all butter. The Magic are going to be so terrible, probably. I still think they got better than what they finished the year with. Chuck and John made a very convincing argument, however, that they could be just as bad or worse. Uh, Sixers have a weird thing going on. We give them a, a parquet for worse. The Raptors, we're glad you get to go home, um, but we think losing Lowry is just too much. You'll, you'll be worse. And uh, the Washington Wizards, two to one against John and Chuck say they got butter with the pieces they brought in. Par fadeaway, gentlemen. What things are you guys looking forward to? Or what have you been up to? We can keep it loose and open. I'm staying in the NBA. I'm looking forward to more details coming out regarding these potential in-season tournaments. Uh, every, 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 every detail that's leaked is uh, another tasty morsel for me. I think that would be really fun. Uh, I, I'm all for it. 
Your boy is officially enrolled in college. J.R. Smith has inspired me. I'm heading back to school. I'm getting a, I'm getting a degree, and I'm uh, looking forward to this journey that I'm, I start in November. It's online, but it'll be uh, it'll be a fun little journey. And that's Are what you I'm a boiler maker. I I am officially enrolled at Purdue University o- online. You've always been a boiler maker to me, Chuck. Yeah, I can't drink them anymore. <laughs> yeah. so I became one. You and so, you and Drew Brees. Me and Drew Brees. Uh, me and Glenn, the big dog Robinson. Oh sure. yeah. Uh, Brian Cardinal. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> so Brian yeah, Cardinal is on the new Two Ks All Grizzlies team. That's what? insanity. Instead of having Pal Gasol, they have Brian Cardinal. <laughs> That's mind like, blowing. They do like classic teams and they do have one of the Pal Gasol teams and inexplicably Pal is nowhere. And there's Brian Cardinal. Keith, what are you looking forward to? Man, I think I'm looking forward to um, the one, the two more weeks before training camps open. I'm going to keep tearing through these, uh, these movies. I watched an amazing movie. Uh, Robert Altman's Kansas city, which oh, yeah. grossed maybe $1 million total. At, at the box office uh it was it was really good um i also then took a break and went back and watched uh, just a michael mann like the uh the auteur for dads just makes movies that guys like watching uh, i rewatched black hat uh that's the that's the the movie where in michael mann remixes all of his movies into yeah. one movie <laughs> yeah uh and just delightful i'm i'm not even sure what, what's next on my queue um but I'll, I'll just keep plowing through the movies until I have to start watching actual uh, basketball all the time. I think that's probably going to be the thing. Well, anyway, that is the full show. A big one for you guys. We'll be back next Tuesday with the Western Conference Butter or Parquet. If you want to see the video version of the show, go to YouTube.com. Check out our channel there. You can follow us on Twitter, Fast Break Break. Follow John, Master John Burr, Chuck the mighty chuck hit us up on instagram at fast break break you guys are the best thanks for listening and remember breakfast is the most important thing i have to be up soon i love you bye see you guys guys.